Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again and today I wanted to go ahead and continue the Righteous Fire trend by showing you another Righteous Fire build. So we had the original uh, Inquisitor which is by far overall the best Righteous Fire build. We then had the Righteous Fire Chieftain which was dedicated for Explode for map clear. Also pretty solid but not really a good bosser. We had the Occultist that was really fun for mapping but pretty much locked behind the Mage Blood. Uh, and then we've got the Champion RF, which I would also say is kind of locked behind Mage Blood. You could make these two without it, but it will be severely underperforming when it's already underperforming compared to like Inquisitor. So just remember anything you see me do here, you can pretty much do on the Inquisitor. But with that being said, let me go ahead and talk a little bit about the Champion. So we're going to be running a T16 Cemetery. We've got Polished Legion, Gilded Abyss, Gilded Breach, Rusted Ambush. This character, unlike the other builds I've done, super thick, super tanky, um, meant to be able to farm Legion without dying. I have had one death on this character. Oops, a daisy. I've had one death on this character, and it was actually to burning ground from the Searing Exarch altar. Uh, I've never played a Righteous Fire build that was scared of burning ground, so Righteous player, or Righteous Fire players are currently in shambles. Other than that, though, uh, it's been pretty good. Just to kind of show you guys some of the uh like the emblems we've basically farmed with legion it's been like really really nice for us all right with that being said i'm going to jump right into the map i just want to talk about my ascendancies so uh naturally unstoppable hero gives us some armor and evasion so i'm 53k right now without alternate quality banner that probably pushed me to like 60,000. with my roomies on i'm 65k i can get block cap without the roomies but i run reduced block maps so i just run this anyway so, uh, also gives stun immunity, attack speed, uh, fortitude gives us perma fortify, first to strike, first to strike, last to fall, uh, triggers anytime we hit vol RF as long as like the buff falls off. So, really easy access to adrenaline, and then inspirational is just huge for aura effect scaling for our build. We are currently running malevolence, defiance, banner, tempest shield, determination, vitality, purity of fire, herald of ash. Um, this character is not using the Dumbledore chest with Assonance. I tried it and Champ just doesn't have that much damage. So I opted out for the much more expensive setup, which is uh, Elevated Explode Chest and Explode Scepter. With that being said, let's jump into the map. We're also block cap with 89 all res. I get 2% max fire when I'm near a unique enemy. Since I'm doing double beyond, that's pretty much all the time. And just to kind of flash the Atlas again, here you go. Let's jump into a map. So there are uh, a few things to understand about this character. So number one, Fall Righteous Fire does actually turn off your Righteous Fire. So to counter that, instead of running Molten Shell, because the character is so tanky, I just don't run Molten Shell. And instead, I, do this uh, I run Righteous Fire on left click. So having Righteous Fire on left click makes it so that whenever I Vol RF, um, it will immediately just reapply. So here's a Legion. I've all RF before to proc adrenaline and big explosion. It hasn't like one cleared a legion with one explosion yet, unless I have like a massive shrine. But I get pretty close to like full clearing it. Definitely could have like more on the explosion side, but this is already pretty good. Considering it doesn't really die either. Oh boy. I think that's pretty much cleared. Okay, and the next one. They are coming. You can see here. Okay, perfect. Do -do -do -do. I think that is pretty much cleared. Alright, that was a good pop. We'll, uh, we'll come back and loot all of this later. Although last time I made a video and said that, the servers went down, so I hope they don't go down again. That was really toxic. Okay. All of the abyss. Where are you going? Oh, my. Something hit me really hard. So another way to tell if you have adrenaline really easily without looking at this bar 
is if you look at your character and you don't have this red tint, then uh, you don't have adrenaline. So the red tint, if you look at my character, you see that red tint? It kind of looks like Blood Rage, but it's more red, I guess you could say. Skip Abyssal Depths. This character does not, um, so I'll, I'll say another thing about this character compared to like the occultist. I do think that this character has much better bossing capabilities since it's a lot easier to sustain your righteous fire on life builds than ES builds. More or less, it's a lot easier to sustain from the duelist side than like the witch side. But in the end, uh, Inquisitor is still by far like the strongest of all the ascendancies in my opinion by a, like a long shot. Uh, only reason I keep bringing this up is, I guess, because a lot of my viewers see me play a bunch of different RF builds. Um, they're really curious as to, like, why I'm playing them. And really, it's just for fun. It's not like I think anything is better than Inquisitor. It's just for fun, right? You don't get a Mage Blood every league unless you want to, you know, farm it yourself, which I don't really want to. So, because of that, I just figured I'll test some, some stuff out. I can't do this just yet. I just realized I'm on display capture. Whoops. There we go. I will say though that the occultist variant did a lot more damage in a mapping scenario but the way i played the occultist was uh, very different this character is much more of like an actual legion popper than just a pure mapper the differences between those is just having the ability to kind of like cascade your explosions whereas occultist we were relying on profane bloom but it did so much more damage You can see here the single target is pretty bad uh, again if you wanted to make this a bosser which i really do not recommend you would switch your links to have like a six link fire trap instead of like a six link righteous fire because fire trap just scales way better than righteous fire No, no DD. Rude. Alright, and that's pretty much the character. Um, just to kind of hover over some of my stuff. A lot of my gear is being borrowed from my other characters as well. So, like, this Explode Scepter was on my Chieftain. Uh, this helmet, I think, was also from the Chieftain. These boots were from the Chieftain. I may have stole my Chieftain shield. I did get new gloves, though. I got gloves for the extra conversion um, because of the... Basically, if you're not Chieftain, you're only going to have 90% conversion because if you take Fire Mastery for 40%, so, like, this one here has it, and if you take this down here for 50%, 5 plus 4 is 9, so you only get 90% conversion these gloves give 35% on top of that so it just puts me at 100% conversion I will say one of the big things I noticed for Legion clear was getting ignite spread to at least 16 uh, this means you don't need the fan the flames but then you're losing out on fire multi but since this character was a Legion popper the highest radius uh, you can get for your ignite is definitely the better um, yeah I mean that's pretty much the character so if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them down below in the comments. Uh, I think if as long as I'm not bored of POE, which I'm not really bored yet, I think I might try to make some like early introduction crafting videos to uh, like really short videos to uh, kind of like sort of slowly update the 3.17 methods for crafting or my 3.16 methods for crafting. Um, so let me know what you guys think about that. I know a lot of people have been asking about crafting videos. They're just kind of a pain in the ass because crafting changes like every single league. So they're kind of things, not every league, but anyway. 
sometimes PoE content can be a pain in the ass because you just have to keep on recreating it. But anyway, that's pretty much about it. Uh, the last thing I'll say on this character, it does do one thing that the Occultist does, where I run a Phantasmal Flame Wall with Ashes of the Stars. Um, not really worth it at all unless you're doing Beyond Farming um, because it gives 25% exposure. And that 25% exposure works really well when you're just trying to kill a Beyond Boss quickly rather than throwing a Fire Trap, waiting for the Fire Trap to explode. Even if the Burning Ground does like seven times the damage, it's the time spent throwing the trap, waiting for it to activate, which is why I run Flame Wall for a purely mapping scenario, right? That's really about it. Anyway, though, hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. If you did, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day, but Sundays at twitch.tv slash pox. Hope you guys had a wonderful time, and I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Take care, everybody.